Today I'm going to take a crack at demonstrating my 1972 Roberts 808D 8-track recorder from 1972. I've had this for quite a few years. I've never done a video about it before. Um, I think it appeared in one of my videos once that I had to delete for copyright reasons, but that's been maybe three years ago. So when I finally decided to put it into more full-time use, hooking it up to the uh, Panasonic along with the Fisher cassette player and uh, MP3 player, so I'm having to use a switcher there because the Panasonic only has one set of inputs. When I bought this, came with the operator's manual. This was made by Akai and Akai has the same thing as I think the CR80D and the ADD just and the 808D do not have an internal amplifier and speakers. So you've got to hook them up to your existing stereo system. Pause your screen and read this if you want. Pretty standard. I do like the way you can demagnetize the heads here by turning various things off and on. specifications and has some other paperwork the new one micron gap playhead one twenty-five thousandth of an inch delivers highest fidelity See what else we have here. Ooh, look at all those nice specifications. Let's see it. Schematic. I'm dating this 1972 because that's when it appears in the Sam's Photo Facts book. May of 72, so that's got to be about the time it came out. Well, they were proud of that one Micron Gap Playhead, weren't they? Alright, let's take a closer look at it. Alright, looking at the unit. It's a very heavy unit. It has a lot of uh, metal and walnut construction. It's got four chunky feet under there. And we have off to the left, we have our headphone jack, a little product ID badge here, track indicators, one to four, manual track selector, some buttons, record, play, stop, and fast forward. And fast forward goes at about 15 inches per second, which is at about four times more than the three and three quarters inches per second that uh, it plays at. You have your continuous play button. When that's depressed, when your playback gets to the end of the fourth track, it will start over again at the first track. You have your power button. You have right and left volume selectors, which are only effective during recording. And you do have a recording light that comes on when recording. Then you have right and left VU meters that show relative volume inputs. Let's see, and in here we have our uh, hardware. Maybe you can see that. And looking at the top, we have a lot of this metal construction, and we have some ventilation ductwork back there. Let's turn it around and look at the back. 
right on the back we have some more information and then we have our jacks we have our line outs and line ins and I have a couple line ins installed for recording today for our video and then we have two microphone jacks here's the underside of the unit some ventilation grill work little safety notice and maybe you can see some stuff in there and it's interesting that the Akai version of this, the CR80D, has a little set screw there for 50 or 60 Hertz now let's turn it over well I thought we'd start with a recording experiment uh, quite a while back I bought a box of recordable 8 tracks blank cartridges but none of them work every single one of them I'll put it in to record something and I'll notice the track never changes and I pull the tape out and look at it and that's just all broken apart so that was a wasted purchase there so I guess what I'll have to try and do is take an 8-track that I would never listen to pre-record it and see how the erase system on this unit works there's an old tape probably from an estate sale or something garage sale maybe pads look good, tape looks good so I'm probably just going to uh, start a playlist from the mp3 player and let it run the whole time and maybe we'll see if the tracks change and of course I won't show all that we'll edit most all this out and see what we get all right let me set up to do this I'm gonna need both hands all right put the tape in Let's record and play. Start the playlist here. You can hear a little bit of sound coming out of the speakers. So we'll wait for a while and see how this goes. All right, well, at least the, no, the tape isn't broken. We switched our track. Still recording, and we're listening to this, by the way, through the uh, Panasonic speakers that are hooked up to the uh, Panasonic stereo, of course. Having trouble with the VU meters. I've never recorded on this before successfully, and uh, the left one seems to work right. The right one does not. I can make the right work, but it's so sensitive that it'll show nothing, then it'll show it's pegged. So I'm not exactly sure where to put it. <laughs> so I'm kind of just sort of leaving it in the middle right now. Well, maybe we'll switch to track three, but I think we're working fine. All right, we switched to track three. Looks like the tracks are about 12 minutes long each. Still don't know about this right VU meter. If I'm pegging it, I might have it up too high now. I just can't tell. That meter's behaving really funky. Well, we're still on track three. The right meter seems to be behaving a little better now. I don't know if that's the input level or something else, but I could be clipping and distorting this terribly, I suppose, since I have no experience successfully recording on this unit. All right, we switch to track four. Still 
booking right along. Hope it's going to come out okay. Well, maybe another 12 minutes. Still on the fourth track here. Panasonic. Fisher. Well, there. Looks like it's middle of the Jesus and Mary chain. So, press stop. It says track one, but did we record anything? We'll find out together. I didn't have the volume set right on the MP3 player at first. To have recorded all right wonder what the tape looks like probably okay yeah the pads still look good tape looks good all right don't know what that'll sound like after I process it but we'll see all right let's try a pre-recorded cartridge you've enjoyed looking at this 1972 Roberts 808D 8-track player and recorder. Thanks for watching. Bye.